what are a few of the common myths or misconceptions out there that are actually doing more harm than good when it comes to women's health? I think there's a few undercurrents here. One that the calories in calories out conversation keeps being had and that women age in a linear fashion. So what they do in their twenties can keep carrying them through. And then I think the other one is a lot of the diet culture that's out there, especially when we talk about cardio and trying to do modern intensity training and different types of things that are being promoted to women who are 40 plus that can cause more catabolism or breakdown of lean mass and bone than actually building it. Why do you think that people tend to believe these things despite people like yourself and others coming out and talking about what the actual science and research says? Long history of how women have been treated in media and media portrayal, all the images now on social media and people promoting something that's not necessarily what they're doing. And it's that rhetoric of this is what someone does. So this is what I need to do to look like them or be like them when we know that you can have a case study of one and put that out there instead of looking at the general recommendations and going, is this applicable to me? Or is it applicable to someone who's in a different population? And if it's not applicable to me, then what is? So there's a lot of confusion out there because we have the skewing of you know, influencers. We have a skewing of how women are supposed to be. We have the sociocultural constructs of lifting, like people are look at lifting in a different fashion versus 20 and the 40s. Yeah, it's interesting to see how we have such a cultural divide on how that influences how women are perceiving their health and what they should be doing. And you talked about influencers and like social media. And I think that's important to talk about because I do think that the way you look is important, right? Like I think people's goals, one of the biggest drivers for people when they work out is ultimately how do they look when they look at themselves in the mirror, right? And I think sometimes that in the name of health and longevity and like not being vain, I think sometimes that gets lost when I think there is a certain level of importance there and that people should talk about that. How can, you know, since we're talking about women here, how can women blend the two? How can they prioritize and take care of their health in a way that they can still appreciate the way that they look when they look in the mirror while also making sure it's not, you know, in a way sacrificing their overall health. Yeah. I always tell people to look forward five, 10, 15 years. Like where do you want to be in five years with regards to how you're moving, how you're living? Are you independent? And then let's put another 10 years onto that. If you're 40, what do you want to be doing when you're 50? How do you want to be moving? Do you want injury? You do want to have you know better health. Are you independent? And then when we're in our fifties, it was like, okay, well, how do you want to age? Do you want to be 80 living independently without any bone issues and feeling really good and being able to do what you want to do? Or do you want to be in assisted care? So it's kind of a, I try to marry the health and, and performance sides together, because if you in five years want to be moving really well, we have to look and see what you're doing now. If you're doing nothing but cardiovascular work and you're not taking care of muscle mobility, you're not looking at tissue, soft tissue, you're not looking at bone density, then in five years, you're pretty much guaranteed if you're in your 40s that you're looking at soft tissue injury, maybe a, a decrease in bone density, and it doesn't matter what you look like. In 10 years, it's pretty much guaranteed that if you just stay this route and you're not putting in strength training, you're not looking at mobility, you're not looking at soft tissue quality, then you're going to be facing this whole issue of low muscle quality, poor mobility, poor bone density, and that's going to directly affect what you look like as well. So we take it step by step. So do you think that based on what you said, that building muscle is the biggest needle mover for women when it comes to overall health and longevity? Yeah, across the board. doesn't matter what age. It depends on how you periodize it or scope what you're doing with regards to resistance training. But we're seeing new and really compelling data come out now that women are being put in the weight room and we're looking at research on women in resistance training. We're seeing not only does it improve our, mus our muscle skeletal aspect with regards to muscle quality and bone density. We're also looking at neuroplasticity. We're looking at improvement of bone density, our agility, our balance, our proprioception, all of those things that make you a very capable independent human. 
can be linked to how we're doing resistance training. And then when we look at the cardiovascular work, that is another separate case. We're looking at what are we doing with regards to endurance? What are we doing with regards to high intensity? What are our goals? Because we see cardiovascular outcomes are also getting benefit from doing resistance training.